Okay. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to Life After Islam. And today we have with us uh, Syed from Canada. And just before I start by introducing himself, I thought I would explain what Life After Life After Islam is, and um, a little more about Faithless Hijabi and why we're doing um, a lot of these interviews. So Life After Islam is our podcast series where we interview different ex-Muslims from different parts of the world, um, be it activists or just um, other people who are not very public. Um, just to get an understanding of, you know, their journeys, how they came about leaving Islam, what their experience has been like, um, and just having a drink with them. Um, with Faithless Ajabi, we have started our mental health sessions. So there is links down below if you'd like to donate. All your money goes towards sponsoring um, initial sessions for uh, mostly Muslim and Muslim ex-Muslims in Muslim majority countries, but also other people who come from, like you come from a Muslim background who are in need of therapy sessions. And without further further ado, um, Syed, um, happy for you to introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity, first and foremost. Um, it's a great initiative, great platform. Um, so a little bit about myself. My name is Syed Hanif. I live in Canada. Um, born and raised, uh, married with two kids. Um, I grew up in a very, very diluted version of Islam. What majority of people would not would, would not even identify as Islam, really. Um, what else can I say about it? It's really, I, I um, became an ex-Muslim about, I would say, very gradually, about four years ago. And I, I haven't really looked back since. I've just been trying to create a path for myself, create a path for my family to, to live better, to reason better with the world around them, and to make a better impact in the world, um, contrary to what the Islamic beliefs are. My parents were the most liberal Muslims I've ever met. It was, it would have been the easiest thing staying in Islam, in the in the version of Islam that we were practicing. So it's really something when I left, it, it, it was really a choice to make, to make where it's, it, it, I didn't have, I didn't suffer any oppression. I didn't suffer any racism. There was no level of indoctrination that was hard to break out of. In every sense of the word, I'm, I'm just the average Canadian. You know. So with the liberal form of Islam that you were raised in, what exactly made you, I'm not going to say leave Islam yet, but what exactly made you think that you were still a Muslim? Was that just the title? Were you praying? Um, did you go to the mosque or... You know, um, were there what what was your everyday like that made you feel that you were Muslim? Was it your name or, you know, just waking up saying Bismillah or something? It was um, you would you would, it, it's you would you would literally call us Ramadan Muslims, right? It was your your you identify strongly with it. You, <laughs> we identified strongly with Islam. We did not practice it at all, you know, scripturally based, you know, we um, and not not on purpose. It's just, you know, there are cultural influences. There are so many there. There are, you know, your your neighbors influence you, the country you live in influences you, you know, other family members influence you. And, you know, my family, we're from the Caribbean, you know, and there's a lot of diversity there. There's a lot of diversity in the Caribbean in, in Guyana. So the version of Islam that we followed, it was, you know, you, you, you hold strong to the identity of being a Muslim, but I, yeah, yeah. I went to, I went to the mosque on good Friday and, and Eid day. That's, that's it. That's it. You know, fasting was never, um, heavily pushed praying ritualistic prayer was never heavily pushed, you know, 
my my family my family drank alcohol wow you know yeah it was very very liberal very very moderate you and know what about there, your like your extended family like your cousins were they very similar or did you have a range we had it we had a good we had a we had a range we had a range but a very healthy range a very um very inclusive range there was there was no conflict about oh you're not practicing islam properly you you guys are going to go to hell or whatever it was uh, such a t- it, we and we still are such a tight knit family even with our very religious differences we have certain certain people in the family that are a little more conservative some people are just like you know what my body my rights you know my body my way you know and they and they stand they on both ends of the spectrum still identify as muslim very strongly right but um it was it was it's a very inclusive family despite religious practice differences um and i guess you know the whole range like you know the not fasting and force um only out of curiosity so were you, were you then born in canada or yeah in the group yes, okay and so like first, uh, me and my wife were uh, she her family's pakistani i'm i'm canadian dinese but we're both first generation right and did your parents so are your parents also people who wouldn't pray and fast or was that just for like kids going forward no no it was for them it was for them too it was for them too and a lot of that i think um had to do with cultural influence like they saw a lot of diversity in the country that they were raised in mm-hmm. and when they brought that to canada we i mean we live in we live in a very diverse part of canada racially religiously so we would even growing up we go to the mosque but we go to the gurdwara even more often than we go to the mosque we'd have relationships with our you know our our neighbors who are sick you know yeah. and hindu or white people or whatever christians and all that right and we go to we go to the churches we go to the gurdwaras we go to the mandirs we partake in their in their festivals cultural or religious right there really was a sense of inclusive in, inclusivity right so and, even, sorry go ahead sorry i was going to ask so growing up with being so diverse and still holding close the muslim identity how and i know this is like kind of right di- diving into it only because i want to do a compare and contrast yeah. how did you come about ever questioning it so in the little i i mean i don't want to call it a bubble right because we identified as muslim but we weren't actually so religious so there was not a heavy inf- emphasis on reading the quran or reading the hadith or learning what you know learning what the what the, the companions of the prophet what they practiced what was islamic history what was how do muslims practice outside the family there was never an emphasis on that right so um when it came to leaving islam i had to really take a step back and really take a dive into the history and learn about the religion and learn like what does it actually say in the Quran and then when i learned what it said in the Quran that's when i was like i need to really look into this a little bit more because this is not the islam that i was brought up in this is not the islam i at that time believed was the correct islam you know and then i've always also on top of that i've also had a a very fond appreciation and a passion for um astrophysics right and ever since i was a kid i loved learning about space and other you know non astro physics stuff so i learn about all the sciencey stuff and learn about all these theories and all these new hypotheses and all that kind of stuff and then it never occurred to me to reconcile it with my own beliefs until i got older and then when i started to i really started to realize that there is it it doesn't create a good it doesn't mesh very well there's no real way to reconcile it and so th- i think that's what made me take that plunge into learning more outside the box it was it was it was it, it really came from learning more about science 
And then having that curiosity to say, how does this reconcile with what I'm actually supposed to believe? And then realizing that it didn't, I was like, I, I, you know, I don't think this makes any, it doesn't make sense anymore. And then from there, you start to, you start learning more about morality and how that fits in and logic and how that's it fits in and your political views as little as I know, but how that fits in. And you start real, I started realizing that, I, you know, Islam isn't for me anymore. I, I can't identify with, even if I, and at that point I still believed in God, but I could not identify with Islam anymore. So then I was like, okay, I have an option. I can just forget everything, forget my passion of learning, forget that, you know, the secular world is going this way, advancing humanity in this way, which I agree with, but then Islam is going this way, which I don't agree with, but still identify with it. I could do that, like turn a blind eye, sweep it under the rug. I could make a lateral shift. I could say, okay, well, at this point, I still believe in God. So maybe Islam is just not the right religion, right? Or what ended up happening is I, I questioned the whole, the whole construct in itself. And I started learning more about uh, how like the characteristics of God and the likelihood of this God existing and whatnot, and then determining that I, I don't even believe that. I think I'm an atheist now. I really do. But it was that it was it was that just the non-ability to reconcile anything with my with science, you know, and science deals with objective truth. Science, you know, is able to adapt all the things we all know about science or not know about science. But all the things we do know about Islam, where you can't, there's no changing it. There's no, there's no reforming it. There's no, it doesn't allow for it. You either believe it or you don't. And I, I stopped. Yeah. Um, I guess what was more heartbreaking for you? Because you said you couldn't be associated with religion and you stopped believing in God. What part of it had hit you the most? Because there's so many different aspects of it that hit you for for me, for instance, it wasn't the idea of not believing in God because I feel like I had already grown up thinking very logically about systems and processes and um, I guess parts of the world, you know, without, you know, praying to God for something. But it was a religious identity where I'm like, oh, my God, what's going to happen next? Like, who am I now? Yeah. So I think that was a more I think that was more heartbreaking for me than the God part. What was it for you? For me, it was, what was the most heartbreaking thing for me? The most heartbreaking thing for me was, I don't know if you're sure if this answers specifically your question, but it was the fact that if I continue to identify as Muslim, what the rest of the world sees, that, that the average Muslim is totally um, blocked from this information, is if you stand by if, if I stood by Islam, I stand by the oppression of women, the, you know, all the, all the struggles, all the denial of basic human rights. And I couldn't do that. I could not do that. And for me, I don't, I don't know if it was, it, it, it was, it was heartbreaking only in a sense that I felt like not I uh, deceived isn't the right word because deceived denotes blame, but the way Islam is, is is taught or is the way Islam is understood by you know the moderates, for me at least, I it was heartbreaking knowing that you know what that this isn't Islam, this isn't Islam, like back when Islam started, they they weren't liberal, they weren't moderate. They were, they were, you know, go hard or go home, you know, and well, they didn't even allow you to go home, they kill you, you know, yeah. and that for me was if I, if I continue to associate with Islam and forget about the belief in God, forget about this, just, just from a moral perspective, it was heartbreaking to know that all these years I identified with this religion and the rest of the world doesn't see it that way. And they shouldn't, in my opinion, at least. 
they shouldn't see it that way. I don't think, I don't think the, the moderate Muslim accurately represents Muhammad's Islam, you know? So just a question before we move on. When you said it was, you know, the teaching um, or the oppression of women rather, and because you hadn't seen it growing up in a Muslim family, how did you necessarily equate that you don't want to be a part of it when it didn't affect you? For me, it was, it was, you know, yeah, you're right. I, I didn't experience, like I said, I didn't experience any oppression. I didn't experience any hardships that came from directly affiliating with Islam. But the more I searched, the more I did my research, the more I um, listened to the stories of people such as yourself and the people that you put on your platform, as well as many other ex-Muslims that have platforms, I, I, my heart broke. My heart really broke for the amount of suffering that I feel happens on Islam's watch. And they don't do a thing about it because what it's, 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 in, it's in a book, you know, it, my heart really, my heart really broke. And um, I just, I couldn't be a part of it anymore. I couldn't, I, I, I had to, I had to do what I could to, to, to change it. You know, yeah. I just I couldn't affiliate with it. I couldn't, I couldn't stand by and, and hear about these things happening and then affiliate with that as diluted as it was. I can't, I could Or even I, by proxy. Of course, exactly. I, I, I just, I couldn't, there's no way I could do that. You know, yeah. hearing the stories really, it really broke my heart. It really broke my heart. Um, and I guess, w did you tell people that you had left? Had you told your family that you had held, left? And when was that? Because you mentioned that you have a wife and two kids. When, like, when did you have that conversation? It was, it was actually a long time after that, after that, really. Like, it, it wasn't like a, it was very gradual, right? Because there's a lot of things that factored into it. There was first the uh, the irreconcilability with the sciences. Then there was the moral conundrums. Then there was my own, like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I just got this all wrong. Let me let me just read the Quran one more time. Let me just, you know, let me authenticate what it is that all these other people are saying, and let me try and understand it. So it was very gradual. So, but I never said anything. I just I did my own research on my own time, you know, before bed, before bed you know, at work, on my break, whatever. And it wasn't until maybe two years later yeah. that I finally came out to my wife and said, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I don't think I can identify as Muslim anymore. I think I'm an atheist. And she, she's never been one for religion anyway, but she, she's always believed in God up until recently. So coming out to her wasn't hard at all, right? We have an awesome relationship. So even if she said, you know what, I still believe in God, we don't believe in God. She, I, I had no issues contemplating that, you know, she, she'll have my back, right? So it wasn't hard per se, but it took a while for me because I really wanted to be sure of it before I told anyone because it does have, it does have, it does have its ramifications, you know? It, it, what if what if my wife never took that approach? What if my wife was like, sorry, dude, no, nah, for the sake of our kids, they, they have to believe it. It's make or break. You know, you either believe in God or or that's it for the relationship. That's it for for the kids. You know, that 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 happens all the time. Yeah. Right. So it was it was very calculated. And I told my wife first. And then I, and even when my wife knew it, it's 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 funny that I, I actually came out in public online right and like all oh, my family's online they all see what see what i post and all that kind of stuff but for some reason i i actually came out and i do regret this to a certain extent i came out online before i even told my parents not because i feared what they would say but it's just that online you always have that okay you can always backspace you always have that security blanket you can always block someone you can always 
you know, you can take time to respond or whatever, you know, so there's always that sense of security that I'm like, you're, you're somewhat anonymous, even though everyone knows your name, they see my pictures online, whatever. Right. But um, yeah, it took a while. It took a long time. You know, this all started about four years ago, told my, told my wife about two years ago and told my, my parents and really just came out public just maybe six months ago. And with the, you know, when you said you had to be sure of it before you told anyone, were you not sure of telling people or were you not sure of your beliefs or what you had believed or what you don't believe anymore in? It was, was that- really, it was, it was not sure of, um, no, I would say maybe none of the above, actually. Uh, it was, it was really me. I'm a very, so I'm a very particular person. Like if I, if I, I try, granted, I'm not perfect by any stretch, but I always believed in, you know, what, say what you mean and mean what you say. So if I'm going to profess a non-belief in something, you know, I really wanted to be sure that, do do I, did I, did I dot all my I's and cross all my T's here? You know, like try and gain as much knowledge as I could, you know, small part of it was, you know, Maybe I can prove myself wrong here. Maybe there's some, maybe there's an argument that I haven't factored in that I could just rest my beliefs on. And anytime someone asks me, oh, why are you a Muslim? I can say, well, here, this is why, right? But then it's like, that would be my only reason. That doesn't make any sense either, right? If you follow the evidence objectively where it leads, the overwhelming evidence suggests that God doesn't exist. Islam is just, a, you know, not something worth following for me anymore at least right and i wouldn't recommend it to anybody you know that's where that's where it all that's where it all was for me um and i guess with with that did you feel like you had to provide evidence like or you had to come up with some strong foundational or like you know a a good argument to solidify your choice versus I'm just not a Muslim anymore. Because a lot of times what we have is a lot of people who convert to Islam, they're like, oh, you know, I just found so much peace in it. And that was their only reason. Or like, oh, you know, because the God is real. And, and they couldn't justify it. Yeah, they couldn't justify it. But ex-Muslims are always put in a spot where they're like, so why did you leave? What was wrong with Islam? And come back and, yeah. you know. What about this? What about that? What about this? And you can't just give them a one answer. And that makes it so difficult. Like that makes it so difficult, but also unfair and double standards are pushed 100%, into it. hundred percent because, and, and a lot, a big part of it was that like, it's like, okay, Syed, you're going to get a lot of pushback. You're going to get a, you know, you're going to have to defend your stance uh, until you die, get ready. And that's what I felt I had to do. I had to get ready. You know, because, you know, as we know, we're a, we're a minority of a minority, you know, and, and, and yeah, we, we are going to have to answer those questions. But I do believe that if you believe anything, if you, if you want to subscribe to Islam or you want to subscribe to Tooth Fairy and, and, and worship that, whatever it is you choose to believe or not believe, you should be able to defend it yeah. beyond it's what it's or else what 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 makes it different from any other belief based on blind faith you know you like it's for me at least it's not good enough to say no i don't believe in god because it just can't be real it just really it doesn't make any sense like i for my own integrity i should be able to communicate why it doesn't make sense like based on what are you saying this or else what really differentiates me from the guy who does claim that god exists you know mm-hmm. So yeah. I think it's important to reason with that information and make sense of it. And for me, that for me, that's a big thing. Yeah, I was just going to say, you'll find a lot of Muslims not having a strong argument on why they believe. It'll go like, because who do you think created you or the earth? Right. Yeah. And that's and that's a and that's a weak argument. But I've also like I've also um, learned to accept that you know, because we're pressured with so many questions about why you left. Sometimes I'm like, fuck it. It's just a religion. I can just leave, you know, I can do what I want. Like, why why do I need to come up with a thesis to tell you this? And there's, you know, I get a lot of this online where it's like, 
defend this point if you're an atheist. If you're an atheist, defend this. And, you know, you know, I, I, I mean, I have the liberty of saying, you know what, I don't know. But it's hard to jump from I don't know to God did it, you know, which is what you're asserting, you know. So I, I, and I, and I, and you know what, I don't, I don't know any, I don't know everything about anything. And I don't take any shame in just being able to say, I don't know, but you know what, I'll learn, you know, I'll learn it. I'll do some research, but I'm not going to be sold on some hypothesis because it's in a book, any book, you know, even a science book. I'll probably go to secondary sources or other, other science books, reconcile it, you know, right? I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's one of those things where that's why it's a belief for Muslims, because um, most of them have been born into it. And that's what they've always known. Um, there was a topic I was discussing with my friends yesterday, and I wanted to know if this applied to you. Mm -hmm. So when we had initially left Islam and we we're like, OK, we've made the idea, we've left it. Yep, cool. But then blasphemy was still something we we're like, oh, my God. Or like, you know, when I would read somebody burning the book for like, you know, up until two, three years ago, I was just like, how could he do that? Or like, I, I didn't want to kill him, but it was just like, like my heart would stop or it would fall like it would just it just made it really like tight and I'm like what is this feeling holding me back and I was wondering if you had those moments be it when you were you know very new out of it because this happens to a lot of ex-Muslims yeah. um, some of them go back to Islam after a while of questioning it some of them stay and some of them create their own version of it and some of them go to different religions and um you know, all of us at some point have felt like, should we go back? Is this right? Is this not right? I'm like, okay, fine. We've agreed Islam is not right. And then we hear any criticism on Muhammad and we're like, oh, what? Like, why are you saying that? Did you have that uncomfortable feelings while you were discovering it? Because you said it was a gradual process. So like, well, while you were uncovering, rather, uncovering yeah. a lot of your learnings. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I've, I've heard of people, I'm not sure, sure if this is what you meant when you were referring to it, but like non-Muslims burning the Quran. Is that what you're referring to? No, a anyone, like any any form of blasphemy or criticism, did it kind of in your head go like, um, like, like, that, like that innate thing that this is wrong? Oh, I can't, no, I can't, I can't say that I have experienced that kind of like, oh, I can't believe you're questioning this type of type of thing. Yeah. Right. I, I can't say that I've ever experienced that because thankfully I and I, I grew up around people that were that were asking questions all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, when my when I remember when I was young and my parents, like when I was a toddler, like the age of my kids, and my parents were in their early 30s, you know, and their parents would tell them how to do things. They didn't just succumb to it just because, oh, my parents said it, therefore I have to do it. No, a, a lot of times they, they went against it, you know, and I've seen and, and because of the way we've, no, we, sorry, the way my parents have brought us up in Islam, it was, it was um, more than, a, as little as it was, right, in terms of like Islamically, but for them, religion was more than just the book. So you know, if they, if, if they didn't like a certain practice in this book, they, you know what, I think, I think this book or, or this religion kind of encompasses what they felt was, let's say, morality, a, a, a good, a good benchmark for morality, right? And they would say, you know what, we're going to teach them this. And they have, right? And that's exactly what they did. They were not constrained to practices in the Quran. So when it came time for me to question or when, when people started like questioning it around me, for me, it was never a, a sense of, oh, I can't believe you went there. It was what about blasphemy? What about specifically going like, well, Muhammad wasn't a perfect man or Muhammad was wrong. Muhammad married a child. What about yeah. something that is like morally in your moral sense, like really wrong? And then you're like, Muhammad did this. Yeah, was that, was I, that I, weird I, for you? I had a hard time digesting some of those things. Some okay, those, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That was, like, 
yeah that was what i was referring to like oh, obviously yeah, yeah. criticism is there but like you know there's this thing with like specifically because when you're told with allah and muhammad loving you more than your parents and you know it's, that you will I, ever love your kids yeah i guess that it was like subliminal messaging you could say because we were never directly told that really? i didn't know that was oh, yeah oh 100 i never knew that was a commonly used phrase for parents or to, to, to communicate to their kids in Islam. I, I never heard that before. Wow. Like, wow. Like, you're, so you're, so you're, so you're not a, you're not a real Muslim then. If you're not told yeah. that, that Allah loves you more than your yeah. parents, you're not a real Muslim. Like, yeah, I think, I think it's one of those things where my parents just accepted, like, you know what, if he grows up and if he continues to, to do his own dive into Islam, he kind of, he kind of understand that on his own, you yeah. know? which I, 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 I took a hard left turn, you know, before I got there and, you know, stopped believing in it all, right? But my parents never communicated that kind of stuff for me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, we were not, by any account of Islam in any other part of the world, we'd be called not Muslims. We're just not Muslim. Interesting. So this is what I'm trying, but, but the identity was still there. But yes, but you always, you always identified as a Muslim for some reason, even though, even though your own practices and beliefs, even like we, we, like, I remember growing up in our house, we had, we had, you know, we have, a, we had a laughing Buddha, we had a you know, on, in our, in our living room. So you know, what was, no, what was considered haram for you guys? Haram for us was... It kind of differed, I guess, between my mom and dad. Like my mom, my mom doesn't like the idea of drinking. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad drinks socially, mm -hmm. right? Um, Was there alcohol in your house? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like with me, my family wouldn't even go to a restaurant that served alcohol because they're like, you can pay for food, but that money can be used in alcohol, or like even go to the cinemas because, you know, even if you're watching a movie that money can be bought in, into alcohol. So that's how I was raised. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like there were times that we would go in your, and my dad would tell you off for it, but it wasn't like right. you cannot go there. Or maybe like gradually he kind of cooled down, especially yeah. now. And he has a very haram daughter. I think he's learning to grow out of it, which is, which I feel like in your family, it happened a lot earlier or in other yeah. families or other generations it'll take longer as well oh 100 but then there's a lot of things that now when i look back i was i'm kind of like why did we do that you know for instance and this like this is something so mundane but in my head i'm just like I, I scratch my head about it because when we go out to eat at restaurants we'd all have steak and whatever and, and none of it was halal but the meat you bring home it's got to be halal Wow, okay. Right? Like some things. Interesting. It, it's completely innocent. It's just that they, I, 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 and I don't want to speak for them, but as I observe how they've done things, I can only maybe presume that they did these things just to try and hold on to something. Like, because I, I, I would do that. I would do that. Whenever I bought meat, I would make sure it was like, and this was like, this is in Australia. I wasn't wearing a hijab. I wasn't praying because I had stopped praying a long time ago. But I wasn't drinking. I it, I was very slowly getting comfortable with not eating halal meat. I would, yeah. if there was an option, I wouldn't go for a taste. I'd go for like cheaper, or I would go for like halal. So right. like KFC because I really like KFC popcorn chicken, and that was the only part of like the ch chicken menu in this specific KFC that wasn't halal. And I'm like, but I really like it, so I'm gonna eat it. Uh -huh. Um, so I think for me, it was like, I don't want to cook non-halal meat at home. Right, right. And yeah, I, I, now when I think back, I'm like, I don't think we really had to do that for any other reason than just trying to hold on to something to call us Muslim, yeah. you know, right? Like the same reason why we never really went to mosque ever or prayed ever. But come Ramadan, we were we were always at the mosque, right? I guess because we felt we had to reattach to that sense of community or solidify that we were Muslim, you know. 
And, you know, but like my dad, all, my dad was always, he was always like sponsoring the events. And so for him, a big thing that I guess he was, because that was his best way to give charity. Mm. Right. And so he'd always go there and just give, 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 which is great. I, I like, I, I love that. Yeah. Right. Do, do, with that charity because I'm guessing you were raised like that do you think for you charity was like uh, based on a reward system 100% 100% not for them not not for them this is purely only me like my how yeah. I kind of, I mean in, I you, can't, you can't say what went in their head like what was going on I in their heads know. anyway but but now like that, in, now that I, yeah now that I've grown up I've seen my parents give charity like it's with not even they don't even expect a thank you it's it's amazing yeah. it's actually it's actually like something that i would have like it's anybody would aspire to be like that like that selfless but the way i saw it because that's what you always hear at the mosque whenever we went you know if you pay for this spot you know allah will grant you whatever you know whatever quantitative amount of blessings right in Jannah, or if you if you do this, it's it's everything is quantified. All your blessings are quantified, and it's like your bet the best strategy you can take is just write those all those things down, add them all up, and whatever gets you the most blessings, that's what you should do. But how selfish is that? That's not charity. That's yeah. selfish, right? Yeah. Um. I guess so getting to know a little bit more about you and how you were raised and your parents what were so we never talked about and only if you're comfortable with this what was their reaction to when you left because you know assuming you do have kids now and what happens is sometimes that we've noticed is they like if we are ex-muslims they hope our kids would be muslims or they would try to like ingrain some form of islam with them islam yeah. them. they were they were I, I like i can speak to my parents like i know they were they were disappointed but they handled it and i'll be truthfully honest here they handled it with utmost compassion and grace so when I sat down and I told them that, you know, I sat down and I like I told my dad and for me, that was a big thing, like, you know, sitting down and telling my dad that I'm an atheist, you know, one of those father son type of moments. Right. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to he's going to just give it to me. He's going to lay it in me. Right. And I told him, I like we sat down and I, my dad, I, I'm an atheist. I got I got it. You're the last person I got to tell you know, to solidify it for me, like, I'm an atheist, and I just kind of said it, right, and uh, he looked, he just, he looked at me, and he was, he just said, okay, do you think this will bring progress to your life, and the life of your family, and I said, yes, and he said, okay, and I was sitting there, like, before that conversation, I was like, okay if he asked me this i gotta answer i'm gonna answer this if he answered if he asked me why i gotta get this you know like you know like how i am right like get prepared and then he asked me that and i was like whoa, whoa what like it's okay like it's it's okay and he's like if this is what you think will bring progress to your life and you know will bring progress to you know like the way you think and the way you sort out issues and build on and whatever if this is how you feel then great and i was so taken back i i was I, like i i think i, I must have just i was kind of like uh, uh okay i had this conversation planned out in my head that was that was i was anticipating to be hostile in nature and my dad was just kind of like oh okay like who can say that I don't know anyone else that can say that. And that was yeah. their, uh, so what they, but, but with that, uh, you know that they're as, as compassionate and understanding as they are, I know they're disappointed. I know they're disappointed. Yeah. Right. They, they, they want to see, they want, they want our kids to be Muslim. 
you know yes. they want our kids to they i think my my parents equate maybe they equate a sense of uh you know lack of morality with atheism right maybe um i, I didn't really get into it with them because i didn't want to rock the boat because i was like i'll just take what they give me because that's awesome right but they never they they i know they're disappointed but they understand and they really do they they do understand that you know they had their turn to raise their kids they they know they did the best they could you know they struggled and they they did do their best and now it's my turn and their only concern was do you feel this will help you do your best and my answer was, going, yes, was great i was going to say that sometimes parents take it upon themselves to feel like it was possibly because i didn't um like i didn't give them the right morals or the right values or that it was my upbringing that led them led him to this was that the case with yours was there any self blame happening from your parents no there 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 wasn't there it wasn't um it wasn't self blame uh, at least i don't i don't think so they haven't specified anything like that but mm-hmm. um they like you can you can tell they always have a concern of like um how do you how are you so sure you're making the right decision mm-hmm. if you're um like where do you like uh, like they would they ask me where where do you get your morals from how do you know what's right and wrong you know and but but it w- it wouldn't go further it wouldn't go too much further than that it wouldn't go too much further than that so i guess with your current setting like you know you coming out to them them knowing that your kids you know are not going to be raised as muslims um how do you set boundaries and define your boundaries and what their boundaries should be because i feel like we were never taught to determine boundaries like with my family it's like i don't want to talk about this and we're not going to talk about this i'm not going to talk about any of my online activities you know if yeah. you want to have and i'm like you can't tell me you don't like this without any justification so if you only right. want to talk to me about religion then you have to come up with a good argument or we don't talk about this so yeah. how how do you find yourself creating those boundaries we we've had to we we have had to you know just like you're saying like we we, ha- we have had to create boundaries you know we we do get into you know the confrontation here or there right like i'm i'm a very stubborn person i'll be the first to admit that right and because of the nature of my non-belief i feel like i i may have not the upper hand but i feel like I can clearly point out the fallacies in why you believe what you're doing is right or why you believe the kids should be doing this. And maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but I I I I I don't tend to hold back why I feel they might be wrong in a certain circumstance, right? And everyone keeps telling me, you know, sometimes it's better to be kind than to be right, right? And I you know it's something I'm practicing now. right but they um they they were actually the ones that set the boundaries because we 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 came to we came to a disagreement where it was irreconcilable right on that particular topic and uh what was it what was the topic it was um no i don't remember the topic actually i don't remember the topic shame but uh yeah but they set the boundaries they said you know what we don't like we shouldn't talk about religion right because we clearly don't disagree and like my dad knows he's stubborn i know i'm stubborn we're not we're not going to meet in the middle anywhere it's not in our nature to do so especially with each with each other right so they actually set the boundaries right we were i was always so type person to be like okay like tell me your opinion and i'll tell you mine and then i'll so i'll still do what i want to do but i always i always value the input whether it's has whether it's baseless or not right I always I you know you want to get them involved you want them to you know have a say in certain things whatever but then it's it's sometimes it's with certain things it's hard to do that 
right? A good example, uh, the most prominent example I can think of was the Akika, right? Mm -hmm. we, have, we have two girls and we never did an Akika for the second one, right? For the younger one. And Do you want to explain what Akika is? Oh, so when, um, so I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all Muslims would do this, but when, when a child is born, if you have a boy, you would sacrifice two either cows or goats or, right? And then if you have a girl, you'd sacrifice one. Right? <gasps> That's not fair. Yeah. Just one, just one, just, just one, you know? <laughs> Right, but um, they were they were on us because we we very reluctantly did that the first time because I was in the midst of figuring out what I believe and what I what, and what I don't believe. Maybe we'll get there next. But for the second one, for the younger for our younger daughter, we were like not doing it, not doing it. And they, you know, very politely kept pressing and pressing. And you should do it. You should do it. You should do it. And I was like. Uh, listen, I, I just don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe in God. So I'm not doing it. And morally, I don't believe it, even if I did believe in God. So I'm just not doing it. Right. And um, I, I had to put my foot down. There. So then, what was, like, no. so what was the moral implications of doing it and not doing it in your head? The animal cruelty. So okay. my, my wife is going vegan. I'm trying to go vegetarian, our kids are vegetarian, and um, my 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 wife is a strong advocate for animal rights, and she's the one who actually was just like because at this point when when we did it, I was kind of on the fence. For me, animal rights wasn't wasn't a big uh, wasn't a big thing, um, shamefully, but for her it was, and she's the one that was like. Syed, don't you see this? Don't you see what's happening here? Don't you see the cruelty and just how how barbaric this is? From a theological oh my God. I can I can imagine her saying it like in her voice and using her head. Yeah, and and yeah, and you know, and for the first child, I still I still did it, and I, to this day, I I there's one thing I regret in my life. It's it's that, and but for the second one, I was like. Hell, hell no, hell no. There's no way. If I, if I, if I, if I don't feel right standing by the the suffering and slaughtering of human beings in the name of God, why the hell would I stand by the suffering of all these other animals in the name of God? Right. Yeah. In my mind, I started making the connection that you and you already and I already know these things. We're animals. We're, we're just like them. We're just like the other animals. We just, we put ourselves on a pedestal. We made ourselves special. And we, we, we were the ones that determined that these animals should not have rights, that they should not have a voice and all, all that kind of stuff. We, we were the ones, like, who gave us the right to do that, right? And, and was this, was your... Was your wife's animal rights um, justice or idea uh, motivated by leaving religion? No, she's always, since she was a child, since, since before me, she always yeah. wanted to be a marine biologist. She's just fascinated with ocean, like with marine life. And yeah. then her, her childhood fascination with marine life turned into um, the, the need to do what she can to protect marine life, yeah, all, all life, right? And that's the way she was raised, right? Granted, even with that, she was still Muslim, so the family still does all these sacrifices, but she, you know, as she got older and progressed in her understanding of, you know, what it means to be moral beyond your own species, she just, she, she really was just like this, I'm, I'm out, like, I don't, I don't believe in that, I don't believe in this. You know, and I think a large part of her leaving religion had to do with that too. As as much as I don't want to put words in her mouth, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I can they say played that. A, definitely yeah. played a part. A huge, huge role. Huge role. It is. It is. It is funny how you know 
we talk about God's creation as a theist and value God's creation, but we don't give enough emphasis on animals as much as we do with human or, beings. Or, or the environment for that matter. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. It, we, we really, I, 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 I'll be, I'm, 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 I'll, I'll take the hypocrite title and say like, I'm not, I'm not even vegetarian yet. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not ignorant to, I'm not ignorant to the atrocities that happen and I'm trying my best. And even on that basis alone, even on that basis alone, I can say that Islam is not a right fit for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, a lot of people that I've met um, who are now ex-Muslims, atheists, have left like Abrahamic religion. Um, I have noticed that a lot of like there was there was this there was a part of them that wanted to look beyond morality set for them in the books. There was right. there was always that question like why is this being done? Whether it be um, animal killing, and I'm not a vegetarian yet, or a vegan. Uh, whether it's animal killing, animal cruelty, or if it came to killing homosexual, um, like you know, you're like why am i like i remember um and i had i had an ex-partner and i had a teacher who was a jew and um i was once really stressed in class and i was like look i can't do this um i need some more time like i need an extension on an assignment or yeah. i need you to remark my second one or something and it didn't matter to me what he was but um he just, you know, he was empathetic and I was like, and he understood and he's like, he gave me that marks and I was telling my partner about it and he was like, but he's a Jew, you can't be friends with him. And I'm like, what? what? Like, I was like, why should that? Why? Be that? I was yeah. like, why? But like in my head when I went to, and this is like years after, this is like three, four, no, wait, this is like six years after um i went to israel in 2016 and i was scared of jews for some reason i had no idea why it was it was and it, it wasn't even just so that that teacher of mine was um tamil tamil who was a tamil person who was jewish i don't know how it worked um but this is me going to israel being pro palestinian and i was irrationally scared of israel and i'm like oh if they find out and at that point i was still muslim but i wasn't wearing hijab um i would go out i wouldn't drink but um i was i was i was not as constrained by religion right, but right. at the same time i felt like Oh, if what if they find out I'm Muslim? Like, are they going to hurt me? Are they going to kill me? Or what are they going to do? And that was that was the ideas that, you know, went around in my head. And I was like, and then obviously my ideas changed when I was in the country. But there was that irrational fear or anti-Semitism rather. Yeah. Um, and I I never I never understood that. I never understood why that was the case. And you know, and then people go like. There's this verse in the Quran that says that if you, you know, you can't come, there's no compulsion in religion. And if there's a hadith that says that if you kill one man, you've killed an entire nation. But and all of this. Ones. Exactly. And then there are like so many ones that you yeah. were like, what is happening? Like you're still killing people. You're still justifying the death of um, people who are gay. Yeah. And for me, I was. For me, homosexuality was such a big deal, even if I'm straight. It was just so big that I was just like, because I'd never met somebody who was gay until I was like 16 in Malaysia. And I'm like, oh, he's gay. And then I'm, I didn't even know what that meant. Like, I, I obviously knew they have relationships with other men, like a, a man having a relationship with another man. Like, it never under, it never, in my head, it just, it didn't seem like an immoral thing to do at all. So, right. yeah. Exactly. Like it just, it just. I'm like, oh, okay. So what? Like, so what? Why? Like, I'm not disgusted by it. I wasn't disgusted right. by it. So, but like, even right now, when you post on Twitter and everyone's like, oh my god, disgusting, you're degenerates, and I'm like, yeah. why are you filled with so much hate for somebody you don't know, for a relationship you don't know, and that you're only looking at people through what having sex that you find disgusting. That, right. that you know, okay, well, you don't like gay sex, but that you nobody's asking you to have it. But at the same time, I'm like, there's just so much hate 
And a lot of this hate has no rationality, so they find and create a rationale for them that is obviously bigoted because, you know, it's not informed based on things like science or humanism right. uh, or even right. altruism. Like it's just based on, well, you know, Muhammad hated gay people and we should do, or Jesus hated gay people or he didn't like gay people. Um, but I've seen more hostility towards homosexuality um, on a large scale from Muslims than I have from Christianity, even though both religions condemn it. But if it had to be on a large scale, I think I've found less acceptance in the Islamic world. And I think I, I, I agree with you 100 percent there. And I think I think the reason for that and I've, I've heard this and I've thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's the case that Christianity, despite what's in the Bible, there has been a sense of reform in the religion. You know, whereas Islam is, in my opinion, by far the religion that just opposes reform with, yeah. you know, like utmost vigor, you know, yeah. like, you know, and so why, why do you think that's the case? I think because, you know what, I, that's a that's a good question. I, I other than I think maybe because of the nature of the claims of Islam, right? Being the final religion, the most authentic religion, the, you know, they, they, they claim however, however, you know, misinformed they are that the Quran is the unaltered word of God, you know, up until now, it's the unchanged and unchangeable word of God. And if God has decreed that homosexuality is a no-no, I must adhere to that, right? Yeah. Despite the society they live in, despite what they've learned about secular values, they say, no, if I want to go to heaven, I have to, I have to mimic the prophet or I have to adhere to these rules and regulations in the Quran by any means necessary, you know? And I think Muslims by and large really do that the best which is strict adherence to the book yeah, yeah. but you weren't raised that way not even close not even close. we weren't even we weren't even i mean when we were kids we weren't even encouraged to read the quran like that's how far from Islam. so have you, have you ever read it like the entire thing oh, oh yeah I've re i read it in arabic no, not in Arabic. I read it in English. I, 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 I didn't ask this to kind of go like, well, you didn't read it in Arabic, so it doesn't yeah. really count. But like, <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was just trying to understand whether you had any knowledge of Arabic because I was meant to read it. Like, and I only know very basic Arabic, which a lot of people would discredit. But at the same time, it was I was studying it academically at the age of two and three with English and with Swahili. So it was like one of those things. Like, and I would never speak that language again anywhere. Right, right. Yeah. No, I never, I never read it in Arabic. Um, I, I didn't know Arabic. Arabic's not my native language. We were never, uh, what's the point of me reading, you know, minus all yeah. the blessings you supposedly get for reading it in the language that it was revealed in. I was going to say, for most of us, it's not a native language and a lot of people were like, oh, but, you know, word of God. So, you know, you know, you know, God liked Arabic, right? Yeah. But we were always told, and this is something my parents taught me was, and maybe, the, and, and I'm sure this is why they never pushed the, reading the Quran in Arabic to me. It was like, why would you, why would you read a book, any book that you don't understand and hope to gain any sort of knowledge? It just doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So they, they, they were like, okay, if you're going to read it, you know, we knew, we knew that we, in terms of memorization, we memorized a couple surahs and, you know, a couple of okay. and all that stuff, but I didn't know what they meant. It was literally just blind memorization would until you, I, I never read would, the Quran in its entirety with any serious with any sort of intention until I was like 17 yeah even then you know you read it for the sake of saying you read it right and yeah. it wasn't it wasn't until later that I read it and I was just like holy shit what the hell am I reading this is complete nonsense yeah right? 
But did you did you at the time because you let because obviously you read it at seven, 17 and then you left religion later on. Did you at the time feel like this is the holy word of God and it has to be real or it was like, blind faith. It was it, it was, was blind faith. It was the epitome of blind faith. You read it and you're like, all right, this is God's word. And oh, but you wouldn't read it in English, though. You would read it in an English version of the Arabic thing? No, no, there's the, the English, the actual translation. Okay. Uh, not okay. the transliteration. I would actually read the translation, okay. right? And um, I, I would read it. And it's like a complete, complete, like completely disassociated. Like, com the, the way my mind was able to compartmentalize God's word and God's laws and then go back to regular society and be amongst Jews and gay people and, you know, and, and just live my life with my own set of moral codes. Right. It, it, it was, it was, it's amazing in retrospect how your mind is able to just compartmentalize that. But you think you're really, you still think you're a good Muslim, even though you're not following any of its, uh, any of its, its moral, its morals. So what about the Hadith? What, how much did you know about the Hadith? as you were growing up? Um, not very much, to be honest with you. Not very much at all. You know, it's just the ones that are, you know, the ones relevant to Eve, you know, the stories of, you know, Abraham's sacrifice and all that kind of stuff. It's all what was relative to, it's only the positives. It was never negatives, right? Yeah. It wasn't until, it wasn't until later, much later, when I started really taking a deep dive into it and, like doubting Islam, that I, I, I took it upon myself to be like, what is the what what is what is what did the prophet what was his stance on this what was his stance on this, and then you 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 you'll, you'll find some hadith online, and I'll go and I'll like you know my dad has a whole copy of like of like all like al Bukhari, right, and I'll go and look at it, or you know Muslim or Godfrey, whatever. I'll go look at it and be like, wow, this is, this is here. It's right here. This is crazy. Did, did you, so when you said you looked at it online and then you went and looked, looked at the book, is it because you thought it wasn't authentic? Like yeah. the online version? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was, I was just like, no, no, no. You, you can just, you can write anything you want online. I got to go see this. I got to go find this. You know, and in I the. Find it, and I'm like, oh shit, that, that, yep, that's, that's, in, that's in what 20, did. In 2021, I still have people who are like, the online version is fake. And I'm like, okay, how about you open the book and I'm going to give you something and then tell me if it's different. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, here, here's a book. Go reconcile it. Then you can come back and tell me whatever you want to tell me, you know? And I took it upon myself to do that because I'm like, any, anybody can write anything. I, can, I You know, anybody can do anything online and make it seem authentic or whatever, right? Like, if, if we didn't know any better, we'd look at Sura Corona and be like, wow. You know? But... Right. So I always went back to the source and was like, oh, wow, they skipped this first and they skipped this first in Sunday school, you know, or they didn't mention this, this Hadith, you know, and it's, it's there, it's there and it's there for everybody. It's there for everybody. But yeah. like, like all moderate liberal Muslims is just a matter of picking and choosing what suits, what suits your secular values, you yeah. know. So how Muslim are you really? Yeah. Interesting. Like with the Hadith, I didn't know what the Hadith was, like the word itself. Like what did that mean? So apparently it is just stories, right? Yeah. Uh, so I had learned a lot of Islamic history. I was like top in my madrasa class, some of them, like not not like the complete top, but like in the high ranges. And uh, but I'd never heard of Sahih Bukhari. I had never, so I left Islam. So this is what I was chatting to my friends, other ex-Muslims yesterday as well. I'm like, I left Islam. I didn't know much of the Quran before I left it because I was just like, things like, well, God didn't already make sense to me. And I was already not a very staunch believer in God as well. But then seeing the punishment for homosexuality, I was just really disgusted. And that's when I was like, I can't, I just like, I'm like, I can't be a like, you know, yeah. associated with this religion for, even if it's me, not for me for me it was the beating like beating of women like, so i really? i had i had never read any of that so i was just like i can't be associated with this religion you know the homophobia and 
all of it. I was like, I just don't need it. Even if at that point in time, very much so, it was never a factor in my life. I wasn't living with my parents. I wouldn't oh. even pray. I wouldn't, I, I was kind of fasting, but like I would take days off. Like not eating was never a problem to me. I just didn't want to pray. But like at the same time also, I was like, you know, there was nothing about Islam that was an active participant in my life. Right. Except for when I had opposed the ridiculing that happened to a gay marriage that happened in Canada from somebody from my community. And I saw how crazy Muslims were getting. And I'm like, I don't want this. No and way. Then, and then after that, when, you know, I did my podcast and people are like, you know, this, 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 or when I was, when, you know, with Harris Sultan and, you know, um, the podcast and secular jihad is with Ali Rezvi and Armin, and they were talking about things I didn't know, like wife beating and whatnot. I only knew it very, and that, like, so my journey of knowing more about it has only been very recent, but otherwise it was just the logical thinking. And I'm like, why would you pray to a God when, you know, somebody else could be praying about the exact opposite thing. Like, who is he going to listen to? Who wins? You know, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah. Who, like, or <laughs> like, and Destiny. Destiny really confused me even when I was a Muslim. So Layla Til Qadr, where you'd go like, so God knows everything about me. Now I'm asking for my destiny to be altered. So it goes in this direction, but then God knows everything about me. So he knows I'm asking. So why do I even have to ask? And, and God already has a plan for you. So exactly. How you are exactly. really. Exactly. And then I was like, so if I have to ask, um, and the next year I want it to go there. So he already knows all of this. So why yeah. do I even have to ask? Um, yeah, and exactly. that, was, and then, that was something. That a, was, yeah. And then you take a deep dive into that, you know, but don't forget, you still have free will. It's like, seriously, what? Yeah. The, how does that make any sense? You know, like, and for me, for me, it was, for me, it was um, like just beating women. It's like, really, God, this is this is the best you got. You know, this is you. This is your this is your final book. You know, even if you want this is your this is not you know, this is not the first iteration. This is supposed to be your final message. This is what you, this is your stamp on the world. And this is what you're condoning. You know, and it's very black and white, contrary to what Muslim apologists want to say. It is very yeah. black and white. And this is the best you got. But then you hear things like from the average Muslim, like, oh, improve, you can't improve the, the, the Quran, improve one word in the Quran and blah, blah, blah. And you're kind of like, like, give me a pen and give me like two seconds, man. I'll, I'll, I'll scribble just a little disclaimer that says, you know, but if anything, if any of the, what you've read contradicts your own even gut feeling, feel free to disregard any of it. Yeah. Imagine just how many people, how many lives would have been spared? How much, like, there'd be, there, like, there'd be no justification for oppression. And it just, it just that one, yeah. whatever I just said off the top of my head in like three seconds. Yeah. But no, but that, that, that's the best God has. Yeah, it really. is. It is like to me, it was like, so a powerful God and an all knowing God needs you to defend them. He can't just right. snap his finger and go like, oh, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, like that's that was like, so that has always been like, so you want to be the defender of somebody who has created you. You feel like that is your moral obligation. Um, yeah, that's that's really surprising to me. Um, we are almost at the end of it. Um, but we're going to have you back on on different topics. Um, I guess no worries. I guess I had um, I always ask this to people towards the end of their podcast. Um, if you had any advice that you could give a younger self, younger ex-Muslims or just younger people, what would you tell yourself? And it could be ex-Muslim related or not. Like, what would you give? What would you tell people that is important to you that you wish you would have known earlier or you think they should know now? I think it's 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 very hard for me to, to to answer that because so many people's circumstances like I can easily say, okay guys, it's time you think for yourselves. But how many people how many Muslims in the world they, they don't have that, they don't have that luxury. Yeah. You know, stand up against your oppressors. There is a lot of people that, that yeah. there majority of Muslims in the world can't do that. 
So the best thing, I think, the best piece of advice would be if you could give one thing in secret, it would be to future generations, whether it's your own kids. Don't teach them what to think. Don't tell them what to think. Teach them how to think. I think that's, you know, if, you know, if, if, you know, some people, it is a tragic and sad reality that they will be oppressed for the rest of their lives. We can't help everybody. But if you can't get out of the situation that you're in, I think you can teach your kids, you can set your kids up for success, you know, and for the people that are in countries where you won't get shot or flogged for stating your opinion, you know, don't worry about what people tell you, think for yourself, find the answers and think for yourself if you have, if you're safe doing so. But if you're not safe doing so, teach your kids to live that way, you know, and maybe if enough of them band together, they can, they can change the world. I think that would be my message. Yeah, that is, that is very insightful. Um, I think a lot of people don't know how to teach, and I guess this is probably relevant for our cultures, how to yeah. teach our kids to think or act or process things versus this is what you should do because I, because you're, you're told that like, this is, this. Yeah. I'm right. I'm right. I, I've had fights, you know, like not fights, but like whenever I get into an argument with my mom and I'm like, but this, and she's like, you think you know more than me? And I'm like, yeah, in fact, I do actually. <laughs> and like, yeah. I'm like, you may be wiser in some areas, but there are things that I know more. And yeah. I, 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 I can understand she hates it. But at the same time, I think she respects that, um, I have the ability to do it. Yeah. Uh, if I could close with a, just a short story, and this is something that happened. Oh yeah, no, go for a, it. A while ago, with uh, with my older kid, who's now four, and a while ago we were we were at an occasion where um, everyone around us was making dua, right? And they had their hands up, right? And they're reading in Arabic and all that kind of stuff. And my and later on, like you know, out of respect. You know, I also put my hands up. My wife put her hands up. We told our four-year-old, okay, just put your hands up, you know, whatever, right? That was not the time to, to justify why you don't want to put your hands up, you know? Um, but then a couple of days later, she came, she comes to me. She goes, Papa, what was this, right? And I was like, and, you know, this is in my own house. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to have fun with this. So, and I think it, it was like a meme that I, I saw circulating at one time, but it was so, it was just perfect. And I was just like, so I told her, I'm like, oh, so, you know, all those kids that are in the hospital and they're sick and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're going to die and all those parents are going to die. You know, that person that they're praying to. Yeah. He's the guy that doesn't answer their prayers. Right. Cause she asked me what was God. Like, well, I said, oh, they're praying to God. He's always gone. So I was just like, oh yeah, he's the guy that doesn't answer your prayers. And she looked at me and she goes, she goes, so why are they praying? And out loud, I was like, well, you know, certain people believe in that there's this God that you can pray to and they'll answer your prayers. But then some people believe that this other God will answer your prayers and they end up clashing and creating a lot of conflict. And in my head, I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, there, there were trophies being given out, rounds of applause. And I was just like, ladies and gentlemen, a four-year-old, you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is great. Just this, to the sheer innocence, like just, it genuinely did not make sense to her. Like, why are they praying? Yeah. Right. And I, I, I didn't do, I, I, I raise her to make her own choices. I present the information. I make her use her own reason, develop her own reasoning skills and make the choices. Right. And when she said that, I was just like, well, mic drop, you know, that's, that's, the mind of a four-year-old can out, out maneuver or outthink the mind of what 1.7 billion people, and that's only the Muslims. There, 90% of the world believes in some god or another. 
how many of the prayers are proven to be answered? Zero. Yeah. My four-year-old got it. What, what's what's taking the world so long? You know. But yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a funny story. It was. I, I, yeah. No, it definitely is. Um, do you still partake in? Um, I guess for the you know, for the ease of people's comfort, or I guess um, not to create conflict, still kind of pray or pretend to pray. Um, I do. I do. Mm -hmm. And it's out of sheer respect. Um, I think I like as 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 brute as I come off online, you know, in person when you're around family and you know they they they've lost a dear one, you know, you know, and they're 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 at the janaza or they're praying and they're making dua for their soul to rest in peace and all that sort of stuff like. I know that if I'm if I'm the only one there, and most likely I am going to be the only one at a janaza who's an atheist, right? But if the people around me are near and dear to me, and the people that the person that have passed that has passed is near and dear to me, yeah, like I will, I will. Um, I don't know if you want to call it safe face, but I will, I will put up my hands, and I, I probably I won't say anything. I don't believe in it, but I'll put up my hands, right? and pretend to make dua just because the attention in my opinion this is all my opinion the attention shouldn't be taken away from what they believe and what's happening at the moment and put onto me as like why isn't this guy putting his hands up or yeah. why isn't this guy whatever whatever right um praying is a different story like i won't i won't actually partake in prayer just because i've never been in a situation where i've been the only one not partaking in prayer you know what i mean so i've never been faced with that conundrum right but in terms of this, like making do, I was like, you know what, now, like, do I really want to create any sort of scene now here? No. For him. You know, so I thought, so I've, I've kind of taken that approach to it, right? It's very circumstance, it's very circumstance driven, you know. Yeah. But um, most recently, it was, it was a dear one uh, that passed away. And I was at the janaza and I was at the, the burial grounds. And yeah, I, I, I partook. Yeah. Because now, you know, in my opinion, now's not the time to sit there and take the attention away from what's actually happening which yeah. is people over their, over their father so um i lost my niece in 2017 and i'd never seen her body until two years ago and like not her real body but where she was buried and yeah. i went there and you know you i was like i don't want to wear a headscarf and they're like oh you don't have to and i'm like okay cool uh, go to the cemetery and my sisters are like you know they 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 were praying there and they're like why don't you pray and I was just in that confusion I was like what am I meant to do like in my head I was like how do I celebrate commemorate how do I like what am I meant to do and I was like I'm not gonna pray um, and I think they were joking. They wanted to see if I could do it. They wanted to see if I was yeah. really, really hurt. But like at the same time, like they didn't really mind it because it was like four of us. And but then I was just like, I I had this feeling where I'm like, so what now? Like, what happens now? Where is she now? And in yeah. my head, I already know the answer: nothingness or like you know whatever it is. But like, it was just so hard because I have, there. there's so many things like weddings and funerals and births and all this that I've been so away from for 12 years that I don't really know what to do. What to so do, yeah. Just, exactly. And I think up until now, I still get nightmares of, you know, feeling pressured by my family or me trying to do this because like you said, you know, out of respect, but I'm like, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I know that if I'm ever put in that situation, I'd probably go like, oh, okay, you guys go pray. I'm just going to sit here. So yeah. when I went and traveling, I, with, sorry, go on. No, sorry, I was going to say like, it, it's, it's not easy to be put in those situations and it's not easy to make those decisions. Like, do I stand? And, and, and just from a principle, do I, do I stand for what I believe in? Yeah. Even this this scenario that I was put in has absolutely nothing to do with me. I, I'm just a spectator here to pay my respects. And what I've what I determined in that in that situation was okay. Well, part of me paying my respects is respecting the rituals of the occasion. You know, and I, I made a choice. Maybe some might say it's a it's a it's a it was a weak choice, 
I, I tried to look at it like it was a compassionate choice because as much as some people might look at me and say, oh, well, if you, I, I know you're an atheist. I know there are people there that, that know I'm an atheist. They're, they're, they're online and I'm friends with them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And they'd be like, wow, they'd probably look at me and be like, oh, what a, what a, what a hypocrite, you know? Yeah. But the person I'm there to, to show respect to, I think overrules what other people think. think what other people think and, and in the end it's your comfort lines your boundaries what you want to do yeah 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 but and and i think this as much as anything else um either way either decision you make whether for me it was like do i a attend the janaza partake in the janaza put my hands up for dua you know and and which i did all which i did all of that you know is that like standing up for what I believe in and like, oh, I don't believe he's going to heaven. So I'm not going to do any of this. Like, is that really what's important right now? Like putting up a stand, you know, is that what's important right now? Or is it showing patience, compassion, you know, yeah. and a sense of unity? And I think, and I think by me doing that, it set a good example because it's actually what we expect of them compassion you know yeah. harmony unity right so i think it i i think it it reflects the expect the, the reciprocal expectation yeah. i think I, I i think i portrayed that very well yeah right? i mean i i can't say i would do the same i would probably go like you know you have to respect that i am not i feel like right. I'm not going to be dramatic, but I'm like, okay, cool. Like you guys do that. Like, and, I, and you're absolutely right. From from another perspective, you can easily look at this and be like, well, forget the fact that I'm an, an atheist. What if you knew I was Christian? Would you would you expect me to partake in that janaza if you knew I was Christian? No, you'd respect. You do, the fact would that you I'm do the same if they were like you know if if you know you went to a Christian family or like right. a Hindu family? Like yeah. for, me, for me, it's more like these are my boundaries. This is what I'm not going to do, but you can do what you want. So when I went to Morocco with my brother and he's like, do you mind if I play some surahs on my phone loud or are you going to get like triggered by it? Because he's now understanding my anxiety with like religious books, text. And I'm like, I looked at him like, hmm, I don't know, but play yeah. it. If it annoys me, I will tell you. And yeah. then I just realized that I liked the sound of it, not, not what it was saying. But at the same time, I had zoned out completely from it because it wasn't important to me. And that's how I realized that I'm like, if you want to pray, you can pray. I'm going to like, I'm going to put my headphones on Yeah. music because he doesn't. I don't know if he does. I think he does listen to music or he doesn't. But at the same time, I was like, this is what I'll do. This is what you can do. So if it's like, if I don't like your music, I'll tell you. But, you know, you're welcome to play it. So that's that's right. how I saw it. And it was a good it was a good compromise. It was like, I ideally would not like to be in a room where somebody is praying because it reminds me of things. And then I was like, this is because he's my brother and this is him being who he is. It helped yeah. me understand my, like, you do you. I'll yeah, do. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, and there have been circumstances even with me where I've acted the way you would call the elf, which, yeah. you know, I've been to church and someone's having a communion. And I wouldn't partake in the communion, yeah. you know. I wouldn't go up and, and you know, eat a cracker, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'd call you no, food. <laughs> like, I, I don't pass on food, <laughs> right? Right? But I, I've actually just sat there and said no. And other family, you know, other family have gone up and, and received communion and put their hands over their, their chest saying that, you know, don't receive the blessing, just receive the cracker because, you know, whatever, right? But, uh, but nobody judged me. Yeah. And they all, and even then, they knew I was like a lot of them knew I was atheist because a lot of them have me on social media, but yeah. they didn't. So that's a certain that's a situation where I was just like, no, 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 no. I think I'm comfortable standing my standing firm in my beliefs, knowing that I'm really not disturbing the peace here. I'm not disturbing anything. Yeah, and I'm able to do so. So it's such a circumstantial and personal like you really, and it's not easy to do. You got to really weigh it on the spot. Yeah, and that judgment call, and there are reciprocal. There, there are, um, there are uh, consequences either way, because yeah. there's a certain someone's going to judge you this way or that way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, 
I think it's very dependent on where you are, who you are at the time, what's happening, who you're around. Um, the idea is to not make, to not be comfortable, uh, to not be not comfortable and to not make others uncomfortable, even though sometimes I do feel that with a lot of Muslims, my presence, especially like I was uninvited from a cousin's wedding and they're in the UK uh, because my sister was invited, but I wasn't invited. And that's like my mom's only family. So my wow. mom was so offended and she's like, none of you are going to the wedding. And I'm like, oh no, she can go. It's not a big deal. And for me, for my mom was like, no, by uninviting you, they're not respecting me. So I was like, like my mom knows that why they uninvited me. Like she knows that, but she was like, she was, she was like a total mama bear. Like there are yeah. things that I don't agree with her, but she's a total mama bear. And she's like, nope, you cannot treat my kids like that. And she'll yeah. do that with my dad as well. She'll go yeah. like, no, you can't talk to her like that. And right. Yeah, there's a there's scenario with um I, I can actually relate to that that's so funny that there's a scenario i was just at the beach the other day and i was talking to my mom and um and there there was someone uh someone that we know that was like oh if side's coming over i'm not coming over right obviously because of the nature of my posts and my social media presence right and, and what i discuss and they're they're muslim right and I, I wasn't expecting because I, I know my mom disagrees with my stance on, on atheism and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and I, I wasn't expecting her to defend me. Yeah. Not at all. Not the slightest. You know, I was more expecting her to be like, no, I understand. And, you know, that's that's your decision or whatever. But instead, she's like, my mom was like, I told him, I'm like, what he believes in is his business. He's not a different yeah. person. He is the exact same person you knew before he was an atheist. Nothing changed except for his beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, and she defended my integrity. And I like in my head, like, sorry, like out loud. I was like, thanks, mom. Like, that's really that's really that you're right. I am the exact same person. I just believe a bunch of different things and have different values and whatever. But I can still, you know, shoot the shit with anybody. Right. I'm the same person. Right. But in my head, I was like. This is a big deal. My mom really, really, really like. If it's there's a form anything, of acceptance. And if there's anything in this world that shows love, it's that. Like, I think my mom, my mom's very much the same as well. Like despite the, differences, despite the fact that she's, or she's heartbroken. She's heartbroken that her her grandkids aren't going to be Muslim, you know, but she still defended me yeah. with integrity. And how did that make you feel that I, I think it was I, I'm believe, I'm guessing it was a surprise that, you know, she reacted that way. How did yeah. that make you feel like what were because I think, you know, you you mentioned that if somebody loves so you had the understanding of love at an unconditional level at that specific point. What else were, I guess, your thought process in terms of like acceptance, validation? I think. Um, sorry, repeat, repeat the question there. So how did you feel when, you know, you were surprised at what she had said versus oh, what you thought would have happened? I was, it was similar to the feeling I felt when I told my dad that I was an atheist, when he said, do you feel like this will be progressive to your life and the life of your children? And I was completely dumbfounded. I was completely like, it almost, it almost changes your entire view of like, for them what it like because you, you know you've seen them grow as parents and all that kind of stuff you go through rough patches and blah 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 and they try their best and yada yada and you say all these things right but i'm fortunate enough to actually be like no no no, no. I, I can really identify when she's shown the like a level of love worthy of utmost praise and re reciprocity right like not many people and i reckon at that very moment i was like wow like this it it really i i in my head i was like don't cry don't cry just don't cry you're at the beach <laughs> you're at the beach don't cry you know yeah. but it was one of those things because you're you're i was so it was so unexpected like that level of ex like that level of expression coming from my mom to whoever she was talking about I was like, I'm like, I, if anything, I've disappointed her the most. Yeah. She doesn't owe me anything. 
she doesn't even she doesn't believe what I believe. She doesn't even agree. She doesn't agree, but and, and, and it's not even like oh she respects what I read. Like it, it's so far. It's so much. She proved. She's shown through her actions that her love is so much deeper than that. You know, like so much deeper than that. It really gave me a feeling of like um, self reassurance that you know what, despite all of it, despite my 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 advocism that I, ha- I I'm not I'm not a bad person I'm really not I am still the same the same side the same you know what was who was once an introvert who is now a you know a, a, a huge extrovert right you know like I'm still that funny guy I'm still that approachable guy I'm still that fun person you know and hearing that from my mom of all people I think for me was like it, it was most important that I heard it from her. Yeah. To know that I haven't, I haven't become this disdainful, sour, you know, like hate the world kind of person, which I don't. I don't. Yeah. You know, for me, that's important. Yeah. I'm yeah. really, I'm really glad you had that. I, I've had that so many times with my parents that, you know, um, that, you know, I, I know I'm the, I was the center of town in Tanzania. I was talked about. You know, they were dragged through the mud with their reputation, whatnot. But then um, they would never tell me about it. They would never tell me that, oh, this person said this, this person said that. They just went like, it's not her problem. Like, why sh- Why does she need to be feeling guilty? Like, you know, yeah. she is who she is. She's not going to stop. But my parents sometimes, like, my dad's like, how long are you going to keep doing this for? Like, being an activist, it's stressful. And I'm like, I get it. And it could be my whole life. It could be two years or it could be two months. Like, I don't know until I see change. I don't know when I would stop, but thank you so much for being here. And if people wanted to find you is Facebook, uh, what are their platform? Facebook Facebook and Instagram. I'll I'll link, I'll link them in the description. Please do. Uh, Thank you so much. No worries. uh, It was really it was really nice having you because it was such a different story in terms of how you were raised and how you found your journey. Um, and it still overlaps a lot with many people, including myself. Yeah, that, it, that was, I was actually a worry of mine because you hear all these stories and the people that come on, they, you know, they have real stories, but, and in my head, I'm like, wow, I really am just uh, the average Canadian liberal Muslim. Not much of a story, but that yeah. doesn't mean you should be deprived of a voice, and that doesn't mean that you can't help people. There There's are so of- many people who relate to you, though. Yeah, there really, there really is, and I feel like just because you, you, even if you feel you may not have a story, that doesn't mean by any sense that you don't have a story to tell, yeah. right? Or or a voice to be heard, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Oh but yeah, but yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunities, Zara. I really appreciate it. And, no uh, thank you your hard work and the many others uh, like you that that pursue this passion of yours, you really do make a difference. You really do, even to the average liberal, oh. non-Muslim guy. You know. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I love your posts. Like, if you guys haven't checked him out, please check him out on Facebook. Um, I'll link it on the details below and join us for the next episodes. Bye, guys. Take care, guys.